Tesla doesn't expect constraints in its 4680 battery cell supply this year, but current production capacity is unknown. Welcome back, dear friends. This is Armin Harayan from TorqueNews.com. If you are here first time, please subscribe to our channel for daily Tesla news. Give us thumbs up and ring the bell so you don't miss my next uh, story. Tesla gave an update a couple of days ago on the status of its in-house production of the 4680 battery cell. The company didn't want to confirm a production capacity, but it did say that it doesn't expect to have supply constraints from it this year, which is good news. In 2020, Tesla unveiled its new 4680 battery cell, a new tabless cylindrical cell in a much bigger format that the company claimed six times the power and five times the energy capacity while significantly reducing the cost. Since the unveiling, Tesla has been producing the 4680 battery cells at a pilot production facility in Fremont and deploying large-scale production at other factories, including Gigafactory Texas and Gigafactory Berlin. The first Tesla vehicle to feature the new 4680 battery cells is going to be the Model Y produced at Gigafactory Nevada. Last week, we reported that Tesla planned to deliver those first new Model Ys by the end of the quarter. After the release of the company's quarter 4 2021 earnings, Tesla Senior Vice President of Engineering Drew Baglino provided an update of 4680 battery cell production, saying, Throughout 2021, we focused on growing cell supply alongside our in-house 4680 effort to provide us flexibility and insurance as we attempt to grow as fast as possible. As we sit today, sales from suppliers actually sort of exceeds our other factory limiting constraints that you mentioned, Elon, in 2022. Or to say differently, 4680 battery cells are not a constraint to our 2022 volume plans based on the information we have. But we are making meaningful progress on the ramp curve in Cato, meaning Cato Road. We're building 4680 battery structural packs every day, which are being assembled into vehicles in Texas. I was driving one yesterday and the day before, and we believe our first 4680 battery vehicles will be delivered this week quarter. Friends, a little bit ago I said first Model Y with 4680 battery will be coming from Gigafactory in Nevada. I think I made a mistake. You should have, I should have said Gigafactory Texas in Austin. So the engineering executive confirmed that first deliveries with, of Model Y with 4680 battery cells are expected by the end of the quarter using battery cells from the factory on Cato Road in Fremont, but he did not confirm the production capacity of the pilot plant. In the past, I've covered the production capacity reports of Cato Road facility re regarding 4680 battery production capacity. It's a two-floor building, not very big, about 10 uh, gigawatt, gigawatt, gigawatt hour capacity, I believe, at that time. So it's not really big. While Tesla is calling it a pilot factory, the automaker has announced a goal of, to produce 10 gigawatt hour of battery cells at the plant, which is more than many other full-scale battery cells factory. Balinio also said that Tesla is making progress deploying cell production capacity at Gigafactory Texas. He said our focus on the cell, the pack and the vehicles here is driving yield quality and cost to ensure we're ready for larger volumes this year as we ramp and next year. And the 4680 battery cells and pack tool installations here at Giga Austin are progressing well with some areas producing first parts. By the way, this is the first time I see a Tesla re uh, referring to Giga, Be uh, Giga Texas as Giga Austin. So what do you think, friends, as I keep moving on, uh, should we call the Gigafactory in Austin in the future, Giga Texas or Giga Austin. Anyway, Gigafactory Texas is expected to be the first full-scale 4680 battery cell production facility with a capacity of over 100 gigawatt hour per year. That's very significant, 10 times more than the Cato Road facility and also but smaller uh, compared to Giga Berlin's battery facility, which I think is going to be about 250, 300 uh, gigawatt hour when it reaches full capacity and will be the world's largest battery factory for electric cars. 
with the facility in Cato and eventually the start of production in Texas and 4680 battery supply from cell suppliers. Tesla doesn't expect a constraint in 4680 battery cells this year, concludes uh, Electric in his coverage, saying CEO Elon Musk said that chip supply is still Tesla's main production constraints for 2022 that brought the entire almost entire electric vehicle sector stocks down a couple of days ago look at my previous report on that friends and he expects the situation to improve later this year and that next year battery cell supply might again become Tesla's biggest bottleneck in increasing production so interesting news interesting things happening with tesla and i'm glad to see there is no supply strains for 4680 battery cells which are going to probably change the specs of tesla vehicles if they give tesla vehicles more range because of the battery's capacity this is armin harayan from talknews.com please subscribe to our channel for daily tesla news breaking news and ring the bell so you don't miss my next coverage and give us thumbs up please like this video if you found the information helpful and share in social media god bless you peace be with all of you friends and Let's move on to our next Tesla story. Yesterday, Tesla CEO Elon Musk just took the entire EV sector down with these comments. Welcome back, dear friends. This is Armin Harayan from TorqueNews.com. If you are here first time, please subscribe to our channel for daily breaking Tesla news and ring the bell so you don't miss my coverage and give us thumbs up if you like this coverage that you're about to hear. Chris Isidore reports from CNN Business saying six months ago, Elon Musk, Tesla CEO, said he would stop attending investor conference calls unless there was something important that he needed to say. He should have stuck with that plan, says Isidore, um, uh, Chris Isidore from CNN.com. After skipping Tesla's third quarter call, he returned to the call Wednesday to discuss fourth quarter's record earnings and revenue. But his comments on this week's conference call spooked investors despite Tesla's successful financial results. Tesla shares had their worst day in months on Thursday, losing 11.6% and, and taking the other electric vehicle stocks down along with it. Elon Musk focused his comments on supply chain issues that had hurt Tesla far less than other automakers. Although Musk said Tesla was on path to be comfortably above 50% growth in 2022 and that the chip shortage is better than last year, he also noted the supply chain problem is still an issue that could slow the rollout of new vehicles that had been expected as soon as this year. He said plans for its Cybertruck, Tesla's first electric pickup, would be pushed back to at least 2023 along with a new Roadster and a semi-truck. He said he hopes Tesla will be ready to bring those to production hopefully next year. That is more likely. That wasn't what Tesla investor wanted to hear, especially as competition heats up. Upstart EV truck maker Rivian is already building and selling its electric pickup, which recently won Motor Trend Truck of the Year honors. Ford is due to start building its F-150 Lightning EV in the spring and plans to produce 80,000 trucks a year to meet strong pre-orders. General Motors this week announced it would start building an electric vehicle version of its Silverado and Sierra pickups in 2024. Some Wall Street analysts were frustrated by Elon Musk's comments on the call. There was no reason that he needed to double down and shout supply chain into a crowded theater, said Dan Ives, tech analyst at Wedbush Securities. He gave the bears meat on the bones. That's why the stock sold off. I'm convinced if Musk was not on the call, the stock probably would have been up on Thursday. None of Elon Musk's comments directly address the situation at other electric vehicle companies, but all the pure play EV stocks fell sharply Thursday. Rivian fell 10.5%, while Lucid shares tumbled 14.1%, and Chinese EV maker NIO, or NIO had its US shares fall 6.8%. I've said Musk's comments raised concerns that if an electric vehicle maker as big as Tesla is facing problems, its smaller 
upstart rivals could be suffering even worse. Tesla shares are down 21% this year through Thursday's close and it has fallen below a 1 trillion market cap, a benchmark it hit late last year. Even with the sell-off, which continued Friday, Tesla shares are worth more than the market value of the 10 largest car makers in the world combined. That means Tesla has a valuation that many people think is unsustainable, making it more sustainable to sell off like the one Thursday, especially at a time that broader US markets are already in correction territory. Investors wanted confidence from Musk, I've said. Instead, they got him talking about supply chain and robots. Elon Musk's comments on the call were a stark contrast to Apple CEO Tim Cook's performance on its call Thursday evening. Cook also had very strong fourth quarter results to report, and like just about all manufacturing companies on the planet, is dealing with supply issues. But with Cook assuring investors, Apple shares were higher in Friday morning trading. Friends, as I'm reporting this story, I just wanted to let you know that I am not in the stock market. I'm not a stockholder and I'm reporting pure news for you. And therefore, what I'm about to say is not bound by any conflicts of interest. I personally think Elon Musk did well telling the truth. It is important to know the truth so people know when to invest because people want return on their investment. And Elon Musk said honestly that we are having supply chain issues and uh, the chip shortage issue is not finished yet. This gives investors a good idea if they invest in electric vehicles when they can have return. Right now, all cars are expensive because of supply chain issues. I have friends who want to buy cars and they tell me that cars are expensive. Not only electric cars, but also all types of cars are expensive. Used car prices have gone up because there aren't that many new cars coming to the market because of the supply chain issues and also cheap issues. So Elon Musk told the truth and honestly said that. And I appreciate that, although I myself am not a stockbroker or not a stockholder. Now, I'm not in the stock market at all. So I think I appreciate what Elon Musk did in this case, telling the truth. So people may be able to invest in other areas and have decent returns on their investment. But this also gives people who are long-term investors maybe a good shot, maybe good discount prices uh, because they know that uh, when the chip shortage is sold, which will eventually be sold, hopefully, um, the, the stock market uh, will rebound. The car industry, the car sector will in rebound. Electric vehicle sector will rebound and things may get back to normal. I said maybe because we don't know about the future. This is Armin Harayan from TorqueNews.com. Please subscribe to our channel for daily breaking Tesla news. Ring the bell so you don't miss my next coverage. And please, let's move on to our next story. Please let me know in the comments section, do you think you and um, people will appreciate or should appreciate Elon Musk's honest opinion on the situation? Have a wonderful day and let's move on to our next Tesla story.